Hi, and welcome to the Lone Star Play podcast, where we sit, eat, chat, and repeat. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong, and we are coming to you from Austin, Texas. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for local restaurants, stores, butchers, farmers markets, and more who are using organic, fresh, artisanal, and local sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. Definitely in a world of fame, um, there is just this love and hate relationship that people can have. They get tired. Some people just go on hiatuses. Some people get on drugs. Some people, they, they all have their thing that they do to cope with being yeah. in this industry. So that was one of the reasons. Um, the other one was my personal love for science. Like, I've always loved, and when I say science, I mean behavioral science. I've always loved trying to see why do people do what they do? You know, how do they perceive things the way they perceive things? It was so intriguing to me. Um, and then another reason yeah. is because I kept seeing these psychological patterns being projected into the environments within those industries when I was working behind the scenes or on set with a, with a whole team. I would see it all the time. Oh, I love it. You got books behind you. I should do that. I thought I put books <laughs> behind me. So like I look smart, but I mean, you're like really smart, but like, <laughs> I could, you know, I could play it off somehow. I thought, no, just going to put something simple. No I like nobody, the flag. nobody would believe it. Yeah, yeah, the flag. It's great, right? It I represents. love it. Uh, it's Texas, you know. Um, not, not so big <laughs> on other. I'm not really so big on flags and things like that. But um, for some reason, the Texas flag, I just, I love this flag. You said you grew up in the Fort Worth um yes. area yeah um, fort worth texas <laughs> nice i love it so what like what part of fort worth because i know fort worth so like there's kind of a um a bigger right. part to it. so i grew up um right it's, it's more on the north side of fort worth right outside it's like a city right outside of fort worth it's called blue mound um okay. so it's a pretty small little town at the time it's growing out i went out there a couple of weeks ago and they got a Starbucks out there. That's how I know. <laughs> it's growing. They got a Starbucks and a Super Target. I, I'm sorry, a Super Kroger. I'm yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> this was not here when I, 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 so I had the, the high school I went to, there were literally cows across the street, like when I was going to school. And now yeah. I drive up there and like there's all these commercial buildings and great places to eat. Wow. So it's growing. <laughs> That's Texas, right? Like all of, especially Fort Worth, that area has grown since I grew up in the 80s um, there, oh you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like, specifically, I grew up in Euless, like for okay. about five years. I was born five, in Euless. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I lived there, you know, for five years, Newkirk, Court, like, man, <laughs> we, you know, representing, like, this was a long time. This was, let's see, from 85 to like 92, I guess so, but maybe like seven years, actually. I was there in oh, Euless. Wow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, so small little, t I mean, now you go back, I really don't even recognize it to be, <laughs> to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's the crazy thing about Texas. The perception of Texas is that it's really slow, like yeah. to other States. And, um, I mean, if you just move a city away, like I'm in Plano, I moved to Plano literally two years later, I go back to my hometown and it looks like a new place. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what people are talking about with this state being slow. And Fort Worth, as you were saying, it growing, is actually the number one city in Texas uh, where people are moving to around oh, the Oh, wow. US. I yeah. didn't know my that. Mom's in, my mom's in real estate. She's been a broker for 30 years. That's why I know those stats. I love that. <laughs> I thought it would be so, Austin. I'm in, I'm in Austin, so I just assume it'd be Austin just because Austin of, was. You know. Austin okay. was. Um, and it's... Um, it's a city that got more people in it before it was done growing. So there's a lot of people, as you know, there's a ton of people in Austin. By the way, Austin is my favorite city in Texas. Wow. It wow. is. I love yes. going there with me and my son. Right? It's only a three hour drive. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. me and my son will just go and, you know, find the natural waters and take a hike somewhere. Love the food. Ugh. So that is my getaway. 
What what's like a what's a great food place you like you like food truck? I mean, is that like the experience you like here when you come? Um, I've tried some food trucks there. I personally like to sit down, but Austin has like <laughs> crazy. They have crazy restaurants, like cr- yeah, crazy oh, yeah. mixture yeah. of you know different genres of food, yeah. and I just love it. I can't. I haven't experienced that anywhere else. You know That's what's funny is. Um, you know, I love Dallas and I, and I actually worked in, in Dallas for many years in the, you know, in the food industry and it's a great city, but the thing with Dallas and Fort Worth all can, I consider it all one place to be honest with you. Yeah, me too. It's right. Like anybody <laughs> from there just considers it's DFW. it. Yeah. It's DFW. It's DFW. Exactly. <laughs> it's all one place. Um, so like it, it, it has a lot of like TGI Fridays, Outback, this, and whatever you, your opinion is about that, it is what it is. But it has those places. When you come to Austin, it's just not like that, right? It just, there's a yeah. lot of independently owned restaurants yeah, and I think that's places. So and, awesome. and that's what makes it, you know, people take risks. risks. They, they try something new. There's always like, you know, mm-hmm. this hot new place to go try. And yeah, that's, that's exact. I mean, that's why I moved here. I moved here to open my food truck and restaurant and catering business. Same thing. So there's a whole oh reason I moved goodness. to Austin. Same reason. Yeah. There's this whole, Austin there's is a whole, my goal, yeah. to be honest with you. Two years ago, I, I was like, I want to move. But Plano's beautiful, too. I, I used to play hockey oh, in Plano. Oh, I love Plano. I love Plano a lot. I've Again, if you're from that area, you've kind of been all over, right? If you know one of those towns, you know them all. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Plano's great. I do love Plano. Plano was another, I'm going to throw another stat at you. <laughs> Last <laughs> year, Plano was ranked the number one happiest city to live in in the u.s number two was irvine california really Orange plano california. texas yeah okay okay yep and it has to do it has to do with crime rate job opportunities because you know there's a lot of headquarters over here in frisco and yeah, carrollton and true. plano area um so a lot of families relocate to be here i didn't even know this by the way when I moved here, I originally moved here because I had a job offer here. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is great. Schools are better. Yeah. I'm going to come here. I have an eight year old son. So I really wanted him in a good school district. And I ended up, this city ended up schooling me because I didn't know anything <laughs> about it. And I learned so much. I was like, wow, I'm in a really good city. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't you love it when you move to a place like that where you're just like, oh, I this is a great surprise. It can only get better from here. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it has to. Awesome. That's awesome. So look, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your career really and how you've gotten to this point. I, I was, you know, so inspired by your story. I'm, I'm inspired by your story. Not now was, I am inspired by your story. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. Your journey. I'm always fascinated by people's journeys and mm-hmm. uh, you know, how they get to the point they are in life. And cause I just know how, what, what, life can bring right as you get older you just right. realize how how crazy the journey could be so i'm curious one just why modeling why what made you say i want to be a model i want to do this is that a tough right. question i want to no i wanted to wait until the oh yeah <laughs> siren went by before I are you a, you're in plano with sirens we're talking about safe yeah place i know what? i think it was a fire truck okay, okay. to be honest it's hot okay. out here <laughs> yeah for sure. fire easily <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, so when I was six years old, I was in uh, kindergarten, I think, or first grade. Um, I told my whole class that I was going to be a model when I grew up. I didn't really know where that came from because like, my family wasn't, I wasn't exposed to that at all. I, I only yeah. got to see what I could see on TV. Or if I went to the store and I saw magazines because we didn't never bought magazines. Um, and for some reason, I just, I don't know, I, I wanted to do it. And it turned out to be that way. Initially, my passion was not modeling. Um, it was music. I wanted to be a composer. I wanted to be a music composer. Wow. And conductor. Yeah, I'm such a nerd. Uh, for music videos. I think for, that's awesome. Um, for video games, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's oh, I, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I always loved science. Both those things, um, music and science, are very analytical, um, you know, subjects. So I yeah. loved them. Um, modeling, you don't really need any of that to be a model. So <laughs> I'm not sure what made me want to do it so much. But 
I started when I was 14 and I kind of, you know, illegitimately, not really, I wasn't really legit in the field until I was 19 years old, but from 14 all the way to 19, I was just busting my head, you know, trying to find my footing, just, trying yeah, to find my yeah. way into the industry. Sure. Um, just like yeah, odd then, play doing photo shoots in odd places, right? Just like um, anything like that. It wasn't, no, it wasn't like anything sketchy. It just wasn't, it wasn't in the legit business of like working with other or, people who were starting out as well, sort of. Yeah. Thing, maybe? It's kind of like, you know, people who had day jobs and they just wanted yeah. to be a designer, you know, yeah, or I guess. it was, it was small. Sure. boutiques and stuff and I didn't learn really learn about the industry till I was 19 that's when I got signed once I got signed um and I also learned this too not every agency is a legit agency and when I say legit I don't mean that they're not good at business I just mean they're not protected under the umbrella of um, SAG uh, Screen Actors Guild or AFTRA it. Um, which is, you know, a nationwide organization yeah. um, of laws that protect talent and it protects sure. the agencies. So when you work under those agents and agencies, it's a little bit of a higher, you know, way of doing business. Um, it's very fast. It's very straightforward. Um, that's kind of when you get, you know, a taste of the, um, you know, the, the crazy stuff that goes on in the business. Absolutely. The really blunt, like, talks, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. There. Yeah, because now it's probably something, right, about your body or something that maybe you haven't had these conversations before, and that may oh, be awkward. God, yeah. I can't even Everything. imagine. I can't even imagine. If someone Everything, talked to me about anything. my body, if somebody came and talked to me about my body, I'm telling you it would be the worst conversation <laughs> I'd ever have. Just like, oh, oh my, my God. God. I can't yeah, imagine. It's, it's everything and anything. Yeah. God. And it honestly depends on what's going on in the industry at the time, because the standards of beauty and what's acceptable changes. I ah, see a change about every four years. Okay. So you'll see a difference. Um, you'll see a difference on what is on TV, what's on the cover of magazines, what's in commercials. Um, and you'll see a trend. You yeah. see a trend over, it changes drastically every eight years, but every four years, you'll see a small change um, in what's acceptable. So if you come in during that time, which for me, I came in over 10 years ago, my look was not the norm. It was not. I was yeah. a mixed girl with curly hair. I had a butt. Um, I was athletic, like, you know, and, yeah. and there was also genetics, like, mm -hmm. sure. It's just it was genetics. And, um, you know, the girl, the look at the time was the all American girl next door, which was blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, you know, white woman. Yeah. So when I Boring. started, it was not easy for me to, you know, get work at all. Yeah. It wasn't easy yeah. for me to get work. But now, now everybody loves booties. Everybody loves curves. People love, you know, the biracial looking people, even if they're not, you know, my mixture, which is black and white, people just love exotic looking people. Um, and you see that more now. So huh. it's just interesting how it's changed. Cause I'm like, man, you guys used to give me a hard time about this stuff. Now you're booking girls that look like me left and right. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's Jesus. Yeah. So you're there for that transition, you know, you, yeah, uh -huh. you didn't, you didn't have that doorway open to you. Um, when you tried to go in. Yeah, that's crazy. So, okay. So, you know, look at where you are now, you know, like what made you say, you know what, I want to take a step back from this and let, let me see if I can get this right. Cause I had to write this down. So it says, this is what I wrote down. Yeah. This is crazy. So it says you're a licensed practitioner for neuro linguistic, linguistic programming and neuroplasticity with a study of cognitive Behavioral, behavioral therapy. therapy holy cow that's a mouthful like all i say is i'm a <laughs> chef this is all i say i'm a chef that's what i say <laughs> that's, it. that's it i host a podcast it's like psh, out you know i could be like well i might change it honestly and, and extend some like 
make it more. I mean, th- but this is real. This is like so crazy. Mm-hmm. Like how, you know, not not that there's some crazy expectation. Oh, you're a model. You you you're not smart or something. Because that's no, stupid, I get it. I totally get what thing. you're asking. Uh, but but you know, you're in an <laughs> you're in a career, right? You're down one career path, mm-hmm. and you decide to switch to another career path. You know, let's just look at it as simply as that. You know, okay. and why this? You know, right? So I had. So I, I stepped away from the industry. I had a love and hate relationship. That's one reason. I had this love and Oof, hate relationship, which is that. very normal, yeah, um, I get it. right? With with most businesses, most genres of, of businesses that people yeah. work in, but definitely in a world of fame, um, there is just this love and hate relationship that people can have. They get tired. Some people just go on hiatuses. Some people get on drugs. Some people, they, they all have their thing that they do to cope with being in this industry so that was one of the reasons um the other one was my personal love for science like i've always loved and when i say science i mean behavioral science i've always loved trying to see why do people do what they do you know how do they perceive things the way they perceive things it was so intriguing to me um and then another reason is because i kept seeing these psychological patterns being projected into the environments within those industries when I was working behind the scenes or on set with a, with a whole team. I would see it all the time. And when I say behaviors, I mean like passive aggressiveness, spitefulness, lack of professional courtesy, entitlement, mental health issues, which is so common in that world, negative egos, you know, power power struggles yeah. that happen all the time because you're talking about people who are quote unquote very important people um, who don't have to answer to anybody. Is it sort of like death by a thousand cuts sort of thing? What do you mean by that? I'm missing. Well, that. <laughs> well, like uh, I got okay. That sounds crazy, right? But like you know, just day after day, you, these little thing, these little microaggressive right things oh, keep happening, yeah, yeah, and yeah, over yeah. time, it adds up. It just like. Mm-hmm. It just adds up. It gets to you. It it becomes right. Everything you, you notice everything now. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. No, no, that's what it was. It was just me. And I had a way of seeing that. And people know what I'm talking about. People in the industry know because they used to talk about it all the time. Like it was normal. It, that's yeah. the thing though. It became a normality. And me coming from a background of entrepreneurs on both sides of my family, I was like, this is not how you do business. Not effectively, at least. Um, So I just decided to just dig deeper. And when I stepped away, which was probably in 2015, um, when I stepped away, I just dived into studying, studying different brain sciences and or philosophy and neuroscience and behavioral science and linguistics and all kinds of things that just helped me put the pieces together. Um, and then I started my company, Entertainment Mindframe, um, which is created to provide cognitive enhancement and internal communication strategies for professionals in entertainment, media, and fashion. Awesome. I, I wish we had something like that for the restaurant industry, honestly. Like, I wish somebody would do something like this. So You know what's crazy is the, is the restaurant industry, technically, it falls in at least in our economy system, it falls under entertainment. So um, that's something okay. that is something that I'm going to have to learn to expand to. Yeah, um, because I'm used we to we need film. it. We're, we need it. <laughs> I know I'm I've telling. heard that the I have heard that the, the restaurant business is like a, a devil within itself. Like it's a whole other animal. It, 100% um, I don't understand is. it because I've never really worked in it. But I've heard sure. anybody I know that's ever done it. It's just exactly what you described is I picture just in a restaurant, everything you were saying about all these things and these people and power. It's like just same thing. You know, it's the stress, the pressure, um, you know, but at the same time, there's no fame. Nobody knows who you are. You know, you're you're getting shit on for, you know, $10 an hour. Like it's the worst (laughs) feeling in the world, you know? Yeah. But at some point when you, when you're a chef or if you work in the, the restaurant industry you are serving i'm not sure where the ego comes in and maybe you can tell me um you know when you get to a certain level like when your restaurant gets to a certain level maybe your 
recipes, your, whatever it is, your service, you know, then you start getting to a level where it's like, okay, now we're having celebrities traveling to come eat our food. Oh yeah. 100%. You know what I mean? And so when that 100%. happens, does that change people? Yes. hundred okay. percent. I've worked so for some asshole thing. chefs. Yes. There are some <laughs> general chef you know general style chefs and in fact there is a transition in the industry between the old style you know the gordon ramsay that you see on tv right like that mm -hmm. hell's mm -hmm. kitchen style is is out the new way is being more respectful to people and understanding where they're coming from and not um. you know it's not the military like we always say like <laughs> It's not life and death. It's an ahi tuna we're in my hand. here. It's therapeutic. Yeah. It's like <laughs> literally we're making a niswa salad. Like why are people so upset here? Um, so yeah, that that's, and I've seen that transition myself. I came from the old school mentality of getting yelled at like that and it'll make mm. you stronger. It makes you better. It makes you tougher. It, whatever the stupid saying is, it, it, yeah. it was never productive. It, 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 you know, the mental breakdowns of people that work in the industry is unbelievable. I mean, drinking, alcoholics, right. you know, drug users, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable, right? Really, yeah. it's unbelievable, the, the percentage. And people you would never think, managers and, and owners right. and just people you look just say, no, 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 never that. Per oh, yeah, they're the worst, in fact. They provide it for, for these people here, here, and here. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a crazy thing. But then, you know there are people that do it right. And there are people that, and that's another reason why I love Austin. There's a lot of that here. People that do it mm -hmm. right. That are they're just trying to bring in food from a farm, yeah. serve it, serve it nicely <laughs> to you. And, you know, I, I would hope that in your industry as well, in the modeling industry that that exists as well, you know, that there's good people there too, trying to do good work. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot yeah. of good, good people yeah. um, that are, that are in this good hearted people. Um, the problem is that I see is they get very caught up in the dynamic of uh, the industry where sure. you're you're going 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 um, and this is this is actually something that I teach a lot whenever I do seminars or I'm working with a team is I talk about the how our our hormones change our neurons and our neurons change our social behavior so um, for example, the two major hormones that we have are dopamine and uh, oxytocin. And dopamine is the motivation. That's the reward hormone. Oxytocin is a love hormone. Um, okay. Those are the two hormones. We get up every day. We're like, I have to feel that. I have to feel that. <laughs> dopamine, as you know, dope. It's addicting. That's the addicting yeah. component you find in medications from your doctor. Okay. That's why people get addicted to it because it feels good. Um, not because they're weak. It's literally because your brain adapts to that good feeling and your body's like, I need this. I need yeah. this to survive. So what happens in the industry um, is th this industry is weird. Like you have to stand in line to make it. You know what I mean? You got to kind of like work your way up, get signed. Once you get signed, you got to work your way. Let's say you want to be a producer. You got to work your way up and, you know, be the water boy and do all that stuff and really yeah. climb the ladder <laughs> to get to the top. Yeah. But when you hit those points in your life, that dopamine hits your system. That oxytocin hits your system. Yeah. You feel loved because you have fans. You have yeah. people that are calling you that want to use you. And these are important people. You know, like when you get an email from Tyra Banks' team, that shit feels good. Not going to lie. You know, okay, <laughs> it feels good. Imagine. And so you get that surge going through your body. And it's really no different than taking a pill and having a high and then having a low when you don't have that pill anymore. It's kind of the same thing in the industry when you're, you're reaching for that success. You get that hit, feels great. And then you search for that hit again. You just want to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and better. Um, so you can become addicted to chasing your success and believe that while you're doing it, you're successful when in reality you're not. It's the craziest thing. You see it a lot on social media now because social media is that new platform. Yeah. Um, you know, where getting your followers up is very important. Getting those likes is very important. 
there's a study in 2015, by the way, by a, I think it was a neurobiologist. He was able to prove that social media is addicting by the, by the uh, production of dopamine in your system and oxytocin in your system. Oh, wow. Kind of crazy, right? Oh, wow. I <laughs> believe that. I, I believe it. I mean, people yeah. are, you're right. People are just so addicted to phones. I tell my wife all the time, if honestly, if I didn't have like, you know, when I have my food truck in the business, I had to be on social media. Like it helps my business. Right. And with the yeah. podcast, I have to be on social media. It helps the yeah. podcast. If I didn't yeah. have to do it, I swear I would get rid of everything. I just grew up without it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I social media didn't come around until I was an adult. So I'm just yeah. I'm trying to I don't TikTok. Okay, I don't know what that. You I, know, don't nobody, I don't either. I don't TikTok. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm young enough too. Like I should be TikToking. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I, I I I see some TikToking places that gets you know thrown around somewhere, but it's just there's so many things. Like I you know, it's like trying to play a video. You said you love video games. I've tried to play video games recently, and there's just so many buttons. Right? There's too many buttons. Too many things going on. I can't keep track i grew up with literally two buttons one button on the atari to be honest with you. we got two buttons on nintendo Woo! it was like <laughs> whoa multi we are multitasking okay this is happening That's so funny. now there's literally 47 buttons and they all have three different tasks each i i don't even know how people do it you give up it's same thing with social media i think you just it's, at least for some people it's just i can't even i'm yeah. done but some people you're right it's it becomes this injection of, I guess, if you get a good response, right? That response, really, yeah. that really keeps you going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, that's a new, that's really the new way of, of doing business now. A lot of it is social media, especially, especially since COVID-19 happened. Everything is pushed more even now so to be online because of social distancing, right? That's so true. people are, are utilizing it more, even though they say they hate it. I have these conversations all the time with people. They're like, oh, social media is the devil. It's just it's evil. And I'm like, I, it's not really an evil thing. It's just so powerful that we don't understand it. That's 100% you know? it. That's it really at least for is. me. And, that's for me. And that can, I like the little bubbles that I, in. you're right. That You're right. That is the danger. It's everything, right? That's the double-edged sword of the internet. You can access everything. You can access oh, yeah. everything. Immediate gratification. Like, <laughs> Yes, immediately. immediately. You want a girlfriend? Swipe right. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's yeah. everything is so you want to meet, you meet a new friend? <laughs> you want to meet a new friend? Go, go get online. You know, yeah. you want to be a part of a group? You want to go get a certification? Like everything yeah. is so easy to get. It's crazy. You can have like a virtual vacation now. It's weird. Crazy that is what's weird. Out there. <laughs> that's the, 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 a virtual vacation. I can't. Yeah, you know how imagine. not not literally, but you know how. You're right. You can visit things, right, with those 3D videos. You can. You, you can. I took my son to the zoo virtually. Didn't even know you could do that. That was an assignment at school when I had to teach. That's kind of cool. I was like, what? You can see the animals from home. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. I, I I didn't know that at all. Shit. I guess mm -hmm. I'm going to the zoo this afternoon. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I can still stay in my swim trunks. This is beautiful. Yeah. I, you know, I'm curious what your opinion is of how much you think of, you know, the ways people are using to communicate or just stay connected now through the pandemic. What will stick around even with things go back to, I'll put in quotes, normal. Um, you know, what do you think will stick around? People still communicating like this? Do you think it'll overtake us? I, I don't know. Um. Do you mean like the, the things that we're having to do now in order to stay connected to each other? If that's gonna yeah, like what'll stick around? Like like a good example would be a, a musician who does live streams now because he can't do live shows. But once live shows um, begin happening, do they continue to do live streams? Right? Do they sort of mix on, it in? It depends on where the revenue is. Yeah, that really is all. It's at the end of the day, it's always about money. I um, guess that's true. It's about money. If, if the revenue is better, if you get paid by the views, and let's say more people can attend because it is virtual, not everybody can travel, not everybody can afford to travel. Um, maybe yeah. that will be, maybe that will be a new thing. I know these webinars um, that I've been doing, I mean, more people are attending webinars that I have um, 
than they have in person. And it's crazy because it's like, there's like a capacity online um, and they're happening almost like every two weeks. Usually when I do a seminar in person, it's planned out like a month in advance, right? Yeah. And I mean, for me it is, but I mean, it's marketed for months and months in advance. Sure. So people have months to prepare for this. There's webinars going on like every week. Just, just now. pop it. Yeah. yeah Monday to Tuesday. And people just, are just, they're coming in. Why? Because they don't have to take the time to get ready, get in their car, drive through traffic. I mean, it's literally a click away. Yeah. You can hop on one or the other. I was literally on two a month ago. I was on two different webinars. Yeah. Two at the same time. Because I can do that now. That's correct. I couldn't do that before. So yeah. it's just, it's strange how... It, it kind of gives people more options. It gives them more access. So I'm not sure what will stay around. I do know though, one reason why I love Texas so much during this pandemic is when they started to uh, have the alcohol to go, like yeah. from the restaurants. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> this is wonderful. Cause that was like, I, I remember seeing that in the news. Like that, out, uh, that Texas was allowing. We were we were fighting for that. I was a, a small part of that, to be <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh! So I have you to thank. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Uh, I just I had the lawyer. I had this lawyer come on who has this Facebook group called Mar. Literally, Margs for life. So margaritas for life. But that was his plan. He got on the he got on the commission. He got on. I mean, it was just crazy. The serious? whole built. Yeah. This whole built that's up funny because margaritas is exactly what I've been getting. I, Totally. And it, it worked. I mean, this was months of, this was almost like when the pandemic started and I yeah. had him on the podcast twice. We talked, we've been talking about it for months and yes, it finally, cause other States started doing it. Right. Mm. And it just became like, what the mm. hell, Texas, let's, uh, let's do this. So yeah, that's hilarious oh, yeah. that you love that. That's yeah, funny. I do too. Yeah, the food, I did too. Having the food delivered. Um, cause I was still doing that. I was like, you know, yeah. this is, this is cool. Like I can still, yeah. I don't have to cook. Just because yeah. I'm home, I can literally just, I mean, so many more companies started using Uber Yeah. when this happened. So um, yeah, that's true. I think that might stick around, to be honest with you, because a lot of times people like to go out for two reasons. They like to socialize, which you sure. can't really do right now. Um, yeah. And they just like the environment. They like the yeah. feeling. It puts you in a different you know, mood or space. But if you don't feel like doing that, anymore all you gotta do is uh, have it sent to your door <laughs> so, <laughs> so that might stick around you know yeah. i don't know yeah no yeah that's uh yeah i guess you know who knows because we don't even know where the finish line is so it's really even hard to tell I you know right? i just like, found out plan. last week that that school is gonna be at least in plain white sd I, I had seen it in fort worth already but school's gonna be back virtual again when my yeah. son starts school and I was like, well, I guess you're not going to be playing with your friends <laughs> starting in school year. I do feel bad Hard. for kids, you know, missing all this just crazy. I mean, I just can't imagine if I was a kid going through this, what I would even be thinking. I know. Vacation. Because when you, when you think back on your school life, even mine, we think about stories that happen with our school friends, you yeah. know, like, yeah you know, getting up oh, and across the room to sharpen your pencil or like yeah. fights or somebody like this person, or you always yeah. remember those conversations or when someone pranks a teacher, those are great memories. And like kids don't even really get to feel that right now or experience that right now. They're just stuck at home with mom and dad or mom or dad. In my, in my case is mom. So <laughs> yeah. how fun is that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even have an animal for him to play with or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is you're right it's tough it's um I, shit i even look at my dogs and think you know i don't we, I, my wife and i don't have kids but our dogs are our kids I, you know yeah. as crazy as that is but um they uh you know i just think about them what do they think is happening because i'm <laughs> you know we're here all the time you're here they're all the time now <laughs> they're getting walks like crazy they just i, I can't imagine they're just like oh shit is this this is the life now i i can't right. go back now what am i going to sure traumatize them Oh, I know they right? love it. Right? I know they love it. Yeah, That's funny. I, I saw, actually, I saw something about that. All the dogs are loving the quarantine and the cats are irritated as hell. <laughs> like the cats are like, go away. 
I believe that. I believe that. That is hilarious. That is so funny. I totally believe that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Adair. Well, look. Um, I I'd, I'd kind of um kind of just want to round this out with maybe you talking a little bit about um one how people can support you know your company or who are interested in your company what what how do they find out about it and also how people can just connect with you you know i'm going to bring it up social media you know <laughs> how can they connect with you on social media online um that sort of thing yeah um i you can go directly to my website and you can always send me an email through there but my website is pretty detailed um it talks about the science and um, everything behind uh, my business and, and what I focus on, which is www.entertainmentmindframe.com. Um, I think the best way to reach me online is through Instagram, which my Instagram name is Brains Behind Fame. Or you could just type in my, my name, which is Adair, A D A I R E, last name Byerly, B Y E R L Y, and you should see me. <laughs> nice i love it don't you love how we come up with the social media handles now too yeah like it was my new, it was right? my name for a minute and then um i had a social media expert that talked to me <laughs> and was like hey you your social media sucks which it does <laughs> it does suck and i never needed it to be anything because Mine when, sucks I was too. The, when i was in the I industry was 10 years ago like social media was not the way i got my business i got my yeah. business through you know, direct um, yeah. communication with people. So even till this day, I still get directly booked based off of the, you know, relationships I've maintained. Oh, that's awesome. These years. So it's Old funny school. when people, it's funny when people see me online, they're like, how many followers do you have? Of course, that's the new way of gauging how successful you are. Right. And I hate that. Can't, people so can't crazy. believe that I was in Vogue or that I've been in international magazines or that I've been on TV or been on movies. Like people can't believe it because my following is so small. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Screw those people. So, they, so I they, gotta work on it. So everybody help me out. Okay. There you go. Um, there you follow go. me. <laughs> follow me. Reach out to me. Um, <laughs> on Instagram, brain, brains behind fame. Brains behind fame. I love it. It's a perfect. <laughs> um, that's great. I love that. Um, well, gosh, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this conversation. This has been just awesome. Um, you know, I wish you the, the best, uh, you know, the most success moving forward thank with you. everything you're doing. I think it's so powerful. Um, it's exactly what the industry needs. Again, I'm glad to hear that it sort of falls in the, uh, the umbrella. Maybe, you know, our industry does need it. So if that's somehow yeah. possible, um, yeah. it 100% does. But again, thank you for the time. And um, appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. You're my first Texas podcast. Love it. I love it. It hits home. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for the time. Um, stay out of the heat. It's almost over, at least for the day. It'll be <laughs> cooler tonight. Right. And then, uh, yeah. So uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Adair. And um, yeah, thank you again. Bye. All right, I really hope you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email the podcast at patrick at texasrealfood.com. And don't forget, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you know, all the different places you can get podcasts, you'll you'll find us on there. Or you can just go to our website, go to the Lone Star Plate. Dot com. And you can check us out on YouTube if you want to watch it. You know, we video these now, you know, on a little webcam here and go to the Texas Real Food YouTube channel and you can find it there. Make sure to follow uh, Texas Real Food as well on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe. Um, and if you, you know, are so inclined, please leave us a review anywhere you can. You know, follow us on Spotify or leave a review on Apple Podcast. Uh, that would really help us out. Thanks again for listening. Really do appreciate it. Um, without you guys, we will, you know, what's the point of doing this? So if you have any suggestions on how we can make the show better, please let us know. Thanks again. Be safe out there. Wash your hands.